This week we will move forward to the new chapter. We will talk about file processing. So in C plus plus, we focus on two different kind of files. For either type, we can create and read and write, or update the files. So usually we have two type of files. Usually, when you're using、um, any text editor to open the file, you can read the file by human. We call they are text file. So usually, text file in C plus plus, we consider they are sequential files. So actually, all the files they are sequentially because you have the data one by one. So usually, the way we Say how to access the text file. We call that sequential file processing. But the other kind is we call that the binary files. What are, are binary files? Binary files. Even you try to open with any text editor, they may let you to see something, but human cannot understand because they are not translate into the ASCII character. So the binary file usually we say can not directly to read by the user, so that's we call they are random access file. So the binary file is random access file because they using kind of the object concept. All the object we have the specific information, so then we save their value in the binary value. That's mean you know in hardware. How the data being stored? They are all in the binary data, so that means computer only understand one and zero. So they just save and display in the binary information. So the text file, the different is text file. They still save the value in the binary format, but when we want to read, all the text editor they will convert those binary value into the ASCII character, so that's for human to read. So we will focus on these two file processing, and at the end we will give you one example how we will do the random access file processing using the application. So the first thing we see what is the files. So no matter in C plus plus or in Java, actually all the files they view the files by byte. So any Data when we save in the hardware, remember we are only through the byte by byte. So you know each byte you have a bit. So when we say the files, they will have the beginning of the files. So then you see the location is zero. So then you have one byte, two byte, three byte. So then at the end you see, for example, here I have n byte files. So they start from zero to n minus one. So total from here, you have the n byte files. So all the files at the end, we have the end of the file marker. So that's usually we see the EOF. That's we mean the end of file marker. Ah,、uh, so end of file marker. So that's of course this end of file marker actually is the ASCII value. So that's the file how they look like. Um, when we view the file, so they can be if we um translate each byte into the ASCII value to, when we can read from the text file. So then we call that as a text file, sequential text file. So the first part we will um process those files because those files they can according to each byte they can read as the ASCII value. So usually this one we call the sequential files. Talk about how to process sequential text file in the part one for this week. So then moving for part two, we will talk about sequential. We will talk about random access file. So what is random access file? Ah,、uh, just like earlier we say. So each file actually we do that sequentially, but sequential file we only using the byte by byte. So when we talk about the random access file, that's we were using the concept as object. So you know the same type object, they all have the same number of bytes. For example, for the student object, 
if you have a student object, so if student object, they have student ID name, or uh, we say the GPA. Okay, so actually for each object, they all have the same data attribute in there. So each student object, they have the same size. We just say, for example, student object is 100 byte. So that means when I reserve 100 byte, they are safe for one student object. So two student objects, three student object. So this one is we call the um, render assets file. The reason is when I create this file, I already allocated then depends on how many student objects I want to. Of course, they are sequentially. But one thing is because I note each student object is 100 byte. So then if I want to find the six student, so you see I can go to one, two, three, four, five, six, and I find this student object so I can update the information. So that's what we call the random access file. And also this random access file, because each um, data size, they are according to the student object. So that's why they are the binary format. So we cannot direct to view that or read from the text editor. So that's the second part. After your lab exercise, we will talk about the render access file. So then for your homework assignment, you will practice on that. So the first thing that's talk about how to process the sequential file. So we focus on the text file. So that's why when you have a file is open, actually is an object created. We call that the file string. So then here, when you have a file string, you can write or read to the file. So actually files is can from the string object. So we see the hierarchic for the string IO template hierarchic. So you all know we have the IO string, right? Right, so when you include the library for the IO string, So this one actually is we do that for the um the text IO to your console. So that's we have the CNC out. So that's the IO string. So IO string actually inherited from the base basic IO. But one thing is when we process the files, also we need to read and write. So we read and write instead to instead of to putting the information into the console. So we input that to the file string. So that's why you see you have input string, output string. So then actually we have the input file string inherited from the input string. So the same thing. Uh, so then you have input and output string. So this one actually is inherited from the IO string. So then we have the file output string inherited from the output string. So from here you have your IO string that you see we have the F string library inherited from that. So that's why in in order to print and read and write information to the console, so we include IO string. So now if you want to read and write from the files so then that's the library we need to include so we need to include the f string so that's the library we will include so to perform file processing in c the header file l string and f string they both need to be included uh, because sometimes when you read and write from the files you cannot stand alone because you still need to write the string into the file so this f string includes the definition of your file input object. So that's we say the if string. So that's for the file input. So when you want to write into the files, and they include all f string. So that's for the file output. So when you want to read from your file.
or you can do both. Ah,、uh, because when we do the binary, the random access file, we can just create a F string object. They can do the input and output object together. So now we just need to remember when we try to process a text file, if we want to write to the string, so that means you output to the string. So you will write your create the OF string object. So when you want to read from a file, so then you will create IF string object to read from the file. So the next video we will start talking about how to. Process the sequential file. So usually we say that's the text file.